Abu Jalil. So we just got off in Abu Jalil, the bus, and then we took a shirt, which is like a shared taxi. Now we're going to Hebron. The Palestinian Authority and also it has Palestinian citizens. Oh. They live under Palestinian law. Area B is mixed. Israeli Authority and Palestinian Authority sharing the uh, responsibilities and included villages and towns around of the cities. Area C, it is military zone. It means Palestinians cannot live there, cannot build houses, they only can use it and it's included the highway. The highway between Jewish settlements and Palestinian uh, territory. Uh, Al Khalil, because Al Khalil it is yeah, the source of history, as you say, or the point of the history. And in Al Khalil, when you understand the situation in Hebron, inshallah, you will understand why the division here, why the conflict, because Hebron it is the most uh, holiest uh, place for Muslims and Jewish and Christians. The conflict actually has moved from Al Khalil to Jerusalem. And the conflict has been moved from Hebron, from Hebron to Bethlehem, from all, to all of the cities, because Hebron has Ibrahimi Mosque, Masjid Ibrahimi, and Masjid Ibrahimi is considered as a one of the most oldest and holiest place for all, for Muslims and Christians and Jewish. So that Muslims, they consider it as a fourth holy place after uh, Mecca and Medina and Jerusalem. And uh, Jewish uh, Israeli, they consider it as a second holy place for them after Jerusalem. Yes? Uh, what is settlements? Settlements means Israeli strangers are coming to Palestine yeah. and steal yeah. the land and get permit from the government and they get permit to build house, illegal house, above of Palestinian land. Oh, those are illegal houses? Yeah. But for them, they don't say settlement, they say Israeli right. So the people who are um, the Muslims, the Arab Muslims who are in the other, like in Israel right now, like in Tel Aviv and area, they're, they're Israeli, like they have the Israeli passport, right? But the Palestinians don't have the passport. They have yes. the Palestinian passport, but it doesn't work in a, a lot of the countries, right? Yes, so what you should do, what you should know, in 1948, we call it when uh, Nakba Day. Mm -hmm. Nakba Day that uh, a lot of Palestinian refugees left. They uh, immigrated to other countries mm -hmm. and some of Palestinian refugees stayed here in Palestine. And they lived in the West Bank and they have a lot of uh, prisons in different places like uh, uh, camps in the West Bank and Gaza. But some of Palestinian people, they uh, accepted to live uh, under Israeli control. Mm -hmm. So the people who accepted to live under Israeli uh, state or Israeli law, they have given uh, passports. So that's why they give them a uh, passport for Israeli citizenship. This is the masjid of uh, Sidna Yunus and the Maqam is there. So we prefer to visit the masjid and take a quick look and then we will visit Al Maqam insha'Allah. Shoes open, please. Oh, yes. There's a little step here. First of all, let me say welcome in your country. When I said your country, I mean that way because as Omar al Khattab said, Palestine walk for all the Muslims in all over the world. So now you are in your country. Uh, from where you come? U.S. California. Really? Yeah. Yesterday I have been there. <laughs> last last night I I, I come here. I back uh, here. <laughs> anyway, you are in city called Halhul. Halhul two words: Halla and Hawl. Halla stayed or lived. Hawl one year. So Prophet Yunus alayhi salam was lived here in this place for one year. Under the ground here there is a cave. It was the house of Prophet Yunus alayhi salam for one year. And after that he left back again to his country uh, to, uh, in Iraq. Allah sent him to a city called Nineveh in the north of 
part of the Arab to inform his nation to worship Allah, but in the beginning, as any nation, they not accept. So he's become angry with them, as the Quran mentioned, but he not give up hope. He asked him again and again, but all time they refused. So Allah give him chance in three days. If they will be not be Muslims, Allah will punish them. Mm -hmm. Prophet Yunus told him the punishment of Allah will come after three days. You have to believe, but they said you are lying. As the Quran mentioned, Prophet Yunus alayhi he thought that God will not punish him with his nation. So he said, if the punishment of Allah will come and it will not include me, why are you with? You have to go. Mm -hmm. So he left him. But he without left the permission him of Allah? Without the permission of Allah. Mm -hmm. He not wait the three days when it is finished or when Allah asked him to leave. You know, as a politely with the prophets, we can't say they, he made a mistake. But we can say he has been patient. Mm -hmm. So when he left him and sailed in the sea, the sea become angry and the ship waving. The captain of the ship said, we have bad man, we have to throw him outside the ship. Mm -hmm. But to know who is the bad man, as the Quran mentioned, the Fasahama, the Mikulatory. Fakana mm -hmm. min the first name come of the name of Prophet This is still possible, this is good man. <laughs> so they so, do it again. Yeah. And again, three times mm -hmm. the name of Prophet Muhammad come up. Prophet Yunus and himself, he know what he did when he left without the permission of Allah. So he jumped to the sea. When he jumped, as the Quran mentioned, There is a whale God sent its wallet, Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ He made dua when he was in three darknesses. The darkness of the sea, the darkness of the stomach of the whale, and the darkness of the nights. Nights that mean more than three, but how many, I don't know, because the Quran is not mentioned that, but more than three. What he asked Allah or what his dua, it's written here. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Allah said, fastajabna lah. Allah accepted his dua and ordered the whale to throw him outside. The whale to throw him is it called Yafa or Jaffa in the beach of Mediterranean Sea. And he left Jaffa and came here and he stayed here one year. Why he stayed here one year? Because when he was in the stomach of the whale, he became sick and weak and his skin is damaged by the acid of the stomach of the whale. So here as the Quran mentioned, Allah planting above him a pumpkin tree. You know pumpkin tree have big leaves, so it make good shadow for him. And second thing, it have a special smell, protect him from the insects. Mm. And third thing, there's kind of food and medicine, subhanAllah, uh, in the pumpkin tree Prophet Muhammad needed. After a year, you know, when he became well, he returned back to his nation in Iraq to see what happened with his nation. He thought Allah punished him or finished him. But when he returned back, he surprised because he found all his nation not only okay, but also believed. Mm -hmm. How they believe without a prophet? When they have a prophet, they not believe. When he left him, they believe. <coughs> As the Quran mentioned, فَلَمَّا رَأَوْا الْعَذَابَ مُسْتَقِدِمًا In the third day, when they saw the punishment of Allah came, he said, oh, Prophet Jesus is right now. That's what he said before when he told us after three days. That means he is good. That means he is right. That means he is a prophet. So all of them believe and ask Allah to move the punishment. And we know Allah have mercy. Allah accepted their dua and moved the punishment. Did he lift him again to come here to die here? I don't think so. Because as the Quran mentioned, that means he is not only prophet. Also, he is a messenger. Messenger, that means he have a message from Allah to his nation. And who have a message, he have to finish it in his nation. And we know the messages of the messengers will not finish up till the end day of their lives. Because of that, we can guess he died in Nineveh, in Iraq, not here. Wallahu mm -hmm. alam, Allah knows that. Yeah. In Aslin, of course, what do you think about them? What do you think about them? Sure, Iraq. Sure, Iraq. Because he is a messenger. Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala. Yeah. Anyway, as our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jewish and Christian take the tomb of their prophets as a, a places to worship him. Because of that, maybe Allah hide the tomb of the prophets mm -hmm. to not do the same thing. Yes. Believe me, sometimes some Muslims, especially from the Near East, when they come here, they touch the iron. Oh, you know, oh, no, no, no. this is shirk. Yeah. Mm. It's not good. Oh, shirk. Sorry. Yani, yes. Let me say, Prophet Yunus here, or not, not only Prophet Yunus, you go to Umrah or Hajj. And you go to the tomb of Prophet Muhammad, and we know this is his tomb. Why you ask him? Why you ask him? Prophet Muhammad said, لا أملك لي ولا لكم نفعا ولا ضرا. I can't do anything for you. Only Allah. So you have to ask Allah direct, because there is nothing between you and Allah. And Allah in your heart, Allah in your mind. صح. وصلنا شغل لما توفى سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. من كان يعبد محمدا فإن محمدا قد مات. as as Abu Bakr said when when Prophet Muhammad died, he said who is slave? Muhammad Muhammad died. who slave Allah? صح. لا إله إلا الله. فرق. 
So ask Allah, but who own to give? Allah. Prophet Muhammad. Haven't anything. All the prophets haven't anything to give it to you. Only the message of Allah to you. That's what they have. قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له. That's it. Only Allah. Welcome. الله يخلف عليك شكرا كثير. Yeah, now you are standing on the highest populated area in all Palestine. Yeah. This mountain, this place, is the highest populated area in all Palestine. So in winter here it's very cold, like America. Israeli soldiers arrest Palestinian police. Yeah, arrest Palestinian police just to show their power. Show they are. The army who cannot uh, be, be uh, forgotten, as we say in Arabic. And like they will arrest Palestinian police for without any cause, without, without a reason? Cause. Just to show their power. Oh. And uh, always, the, as we say in English, they humiliate Palestinians. They populate Palestinians. They just show them you are nothing. Even you accepted this agreement, you are in one moment able to destroy all your institutions. We are able to uh, hide you or wipe you completely. This is the mentality. So, you know, this is H1. It was peaceful protocol, was signed in 1997 between Yasser Arafat and Ishaq Rabin, if you hear about them. Two groups have met in Oslo under American umbrella. We call it umbrella of peace. And they accepted to sign a H1 and H2. H1 is controlled by Palestinian national forces. It's included the north of Hebron. And H2, it's controlled by Israeli army forces. It's included the south. But H2 is divided into three regions. Three regions. One of them, a place only for Palestinians, but under Israeli control, like this place, but under Israeli control. Second region is the mixed road, and this is the most horrible place in Hebron. Mixed zone means Israeli settlements and Palestinian houses together, but under Israeli control. The third region, we call it the occupied region. It is the place where it should be Palestinian market and Palestinian uh, station, city center, and it used to be crowded and busy, but Israeli closed it after 1994, after the massacre, the masjid, and they closed it and they turned it to settlements. So H2 is three regions. Jewish settlements, Palestinian region, and mixed area. So three regions under Israeli control. Now we are in H1. We call it the new city or the modern city. But when we go to the city center, you can see crowded and busy. But when we go to H2, you will be shocked. You will cry of what will be. Area A or H1. So what you should know guys, here we don't have any settlement. We don't have any Israeli army forces. It is very uh, big uh, region, but it has only Palestinian army. We can see the soldiers. Can you see at the flag? Mm, yeah. It's called Palestinian National Authority. No, um, in the back over there. The police. First of all, I want to remind you where we are. We are in the beginning of the area which is called H2, and it's called the occupied region. According to international law, this is illegal. According to Israeli law, Jewish Israeli have right to live here. But 
before 1994, this region wasn't like this. Cars were driving here, people were walking, and uh, shopkeepers were investing here. But actually, after 1994, the shops are closed by military order. It's actually Palestinian stores. And many Palestinian families have been forced to leave because Israeli claim the reason of the closure is to make security procedures or security reasons to protect the minority of the Jewish community who lives there. And more than, you can say, 250 historical and ancient places were demolished. One of them, Turkish museums and Turkish baths and Turkish houses. So where we are, we are in the beginning of the way to Shuhada Street. Shuhara Street, it used to be one of the biggest Palestinian commercial centers in the world. It used to be crowded and busy and full of life and full of people. This street has been completely closed after 1994 and after Second Intifada. What you should know, the closure was closed temporarily. But the closure is completely closed after Second Intifada since 2001. Mm -hmm. According to Geneva Agreement, this is, this is illegal. Allah, all the methods of ethnic cleansing, all the methods of racism, all the methods of apartheid are existing. Children are challenging the fear and walking through the checkpoints to live. Children and people are living here. Most of Palestinians are dramatized. Why? Because when they cross the checkpoint, Israeli treat them in bad way. They humiliate them, babulate them, sometimes detaining them, sometimes shooting people. Many people were killed here. <coughs> also, we have automatic machine gun and cameras and security uh, gate, as they call it, but it's not security. It's called settlement or checkpoint or military bases. Come, please. So Palestinians can't cross through this gate? No, some Palestinians live here, around uh, 1,000 families. They can go, but they have special they have permits. Oh. Exactly. Look, guys, how is the line? Machine gun. Shops are closed. I will take you inside. So we're passing through. This is the military zone. And this is the occupied region. And this is the ghost town area we call it. Israeli closed more than 2,000 shops. And this is one of the one of the Turkish bathroom and Turkish museums. It is demolished after 1994. We have some Palestinian families are living here, but they cannot walk in all over the street. They only can walk in specific distance. And sometimes Israeli Jewish, them, Jewish Israeli children or Jewish people, they come here and they throw stones, rubbish, dirty water, acid water on Palestinian houses because they want to scare them and kick them out. So you can see where is the boy who is riding the bicycle there. Yeah. This is the last access point for Muslim and for you as well, because you are Muslim, you cannot walk there. You need to get permit to access. And this is the new building, is the Jewish settlements, which is called uh, settlements, and we cannot actually walk there as Muslims. But we have some Palestinian families, and they are <coughs> living here. So you can see how they are babulating and intimidating people by their words, and they make things I mean, difficult sometimes. When well, they were saying wrong things, but luckily they changed their behavior, and this is really good to say we ignore them. But we are happy to say we did not face any problem. So, brother and sister, remember this is the last station for us. We cannot walk more than this road. It's the beginning of the settlements, and we call it area uh, military zone, and we have to continue back. Uh, but this is the occupied region, and also we have some Palestinian families here. And we can see the difference. Some families are living here under bad conditions. They don't have market, they don't have schools, they don't have hospitals. They have nothing.
We are in H2, remember, in the mixed area. Alhamdulillah for everything. Where do the Palestinian kids go to school? Uh, usually, uh, we have uh, one school here, but usually outside. Uh, but we have only one school here. But do people live in this uh, yes, building? Yes, yeah, of course. Upstairs? Oh, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's downstairs? Like, what's here? Uh, these these were stores. Palestinian mm -hmm. stores. Closed. It used to be a Palestinian... Uh, it used the to center? Be, yeah, vegetable and the fruit market. And it used to be also commercial center. It is completely occupied. And also, it is, as we say in English, wounded. Wounded by military order. Uh, or sealed. Sealed, right? sealed, sealed by, by military, military order. order. Because Israeli banished Palestinian after 1994. City of Hebron. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yes. they have uh, taken the uh, most uh, beautiful places in Hebron. They have taken the most beautiful places. Oh. Now, you will enjoy a lot when you see this place. Can you see there? This is the old city. Yes. Yeah. Behind of the old city is Ibrahimi Mosque. Can oh. you see the masjid? Oh, the yeah, dome. The yes. And what I want to say, this is the old city and this is the settlements. One of them settlement here. It's Jewish oh, museum. Okay, okay. And the other one, it's Jewish school. And the other one is Shuhar Street. Can you see the street there? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is actually the most beautiful place oh, in Hebrew. And you can see the old city is there. And behind of the old city is Ibrahimi Mosque. We are in the highest level in Al Khalil. Ancient area in all of Palestine. Subhanallah. Eight meters. Jewish Israel uh, uh, swim here. It's the most beautiful place as they took it from us. Alhamdulillah Rabbi. But uh, what makes you feel sad, you cannot uh, feel you are living here, you are a prisoner. Yeah. If you want to wash your face, it's possible, sister? You can. Uh, I'll show you how. It's cold, the water. Mm. You can, you can. On the media, I swear. And also... So you were never able to go to Masjid al -Aqsa? No. And uh, many people this week. So in order for you to be able to see Jerusalem and to be able to go to Masjid Al-Aqsa, you have to uh, surrender and then you have to accept Israel. La, no, 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 this is was before. Today, no, you have to buy permit. Oh. Huh? You buy permit from Israeli government and you pay for it every month 3,000 shekel. What? Oh, you can't even like get the Israeli citizen if you no, want? No, 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 it's not... Uh, that uh, this is before today they don't give you oh. Oh. oh so only people that in the past that they accepted exactly. it, like israeli yes. um oh. government they got the citizenship uh, please sister mention at this place this is the shuhar street we are not allowed to go there because it's the shuhar street only for jewish Israeli. and this is the masjid ibrahimi ibrahimi mosque can you see the mosque yeah, from yeah. we are getting closer and closer but the problem is we, we are go. as a muslim cannot go there and this is a shame because Muslims are a very strong nation and they can see what's happening here and they keep their ignorance. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil.
and you can see comparing Israeli settlers walk freely at our land and we are walking as prisoners. And what happens if you cross that border? Immediately they shoot you. Immediately. They shoot you? Yes. They will shoot you immediately. Look at settlers ch ch children are walking freely and we are not allowed to go to the mosque. That's why we are walking through a long way. That's why we are walking through the cemetery. From the other side you will be in H1. Yani that means Israeli settlement is located in, right middle, in, the in, the in the middle of the old city. Separating Palestinians. Exactly. From one side. And exactly. Separating Palestinians who live in the north oh, and the south. Similar one. Oh. This is similar one. If you go here, you are going to X square to the place that I have showed you before. That you can't you access. Remember. It. Yeah. If you remember it, you remember. Mm -hmm. So here is the mixed area, and this is the red line. Where is the stone? Do you remember where we have been walking in the cemetery? Yeah. yeah. Oh, if you remember, yes. we have been on the mountain. If oh, you remember that there. place, yeah. we were there. Mm -hmm. So this is also red line. And that's the street. Exactly. Red line. It has two places. One of them here, and the other one where in the north. But there's no actual line. Okay, good question. Because Israeli soldiers are standing, they are able to stop. Oh, and, yeah, there, there, there. and over there. I want you to make test, please. Let us go to Gadar. And see. Try to is go. It, is it safe? It's safe, I promise. And then they're gonna promise. shoot me? Just go because you're American <laughs> and I wait for you here. Okay. Yeah, just try to ask if it's possible to walk and you will see that action. We're walking towards the the checkpoint where Palestinians can't cross. cross. And it's a, it's a red line. There's line. no line, but, but it's uh, you see there. all the soldiers standing there. I hope we don't get shot. Cars coming Those are Israeli cars. Those are Israeli cars. Yeah. Can we see the air? Hi. Hi. Visiting? Okay. And Israel? Can I see some? Yeah. Yeah. Do you need to see the visa card? Pirat, Pirat, Betamahat. Okay. Are you Muslim? Yes. Okay, wait a minute. Pirat, Betamahat. Wait, uh, sure. Sure. How are they? Everything is okay? Yeah. How is the country? Amazing. It's beautiful. It's just, it's just, we hear a lot of different yeah. stories from ah. different people. Yeah. And that's why we want to like see. So there is different side to each story. Yeah. So there is no a. Uh, we can't go out there. We can't go. Yeah. We okay. need to go back. We are uh, sorry. And, and have a great day. And okay. a great visitation in Israel. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a wonderful day. So they didn't let us enter, but they were really polite. Um, so whatever our guide said was true. Um, although they were really nice and uh, they were respectful, but you can't cross the red line. 
I think Muslims can't cross yeah, the red Muslims line. Yeah, Muslims can't go across the red line. This is the only one has a house next to Ibrahim Mosque. And if you want to buy from here, please get it from me. Because here, family don't have any shop. And I really advise you to buy from me. I mean, if you want. If you don't want, it's a bag from me. Do they have a Coke or something? Yes. This is the only store that's in the area. Arrive or to reach to Ibrahim Mosque. So remember, we are also here. It's not allowed for Muslims to go there. And this is the shared area. We can see Jewish settlement and Palestinian houses. Oh, wow. So that's the Jewish settlement yes. and Palestinian and Remember, residence. can you see the checkpoint there? Yeah. This is religious border. Muslim cannot go there because it's the other side of the mosque. They call it synagogue. And Jewish cannot go to the left. And Muslim cannot go to the left. To the right, sorry. And Jewish cannot go to the left. So here is the religious border. Jewish Israeli live there, they can use the street. And Jewish Israeli cannot go to the left. Palestinians cannot go to the right. So this is a checkpoint, it is religious border. That's why if you go there, they ask you about your religion because Muslim cannot go there. Okay, I have another question. Yes, please. <laughs> I have seen three different uniforms. One for the border patrol, one for the regular police, and one this one. What is this one for? Natural and uh, national, national army. National. Yeah, they use them usually in the war. Oh. And other uh, border police. Border police. And other uh, secret regular service. Oh, or secret, secret service. service. Uh, because we have secret service and also regular uh, army. Uh, different types, but you should know uh, border police. Okay. Muslim go there? American Muslim can go there? No. No? No. Okay, as I told you guys. Hey, can Christians go there? Yes. yes. Only oh, Christian Christ and Jewish. But oh. Jewish cannot go there. Jewish can, also can, can Christians come here? Christians yes. come here? Christian can go there. Oh, Christian can go anywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very so interesting. So that's the situation, guys. In Hebron, that's why I brought you from the old area because I want to show you how is the life. There are a lot of street vendors in this road. Please do what you can to help them as they are living a difficult life. This is the Ibrahimi Mosque. On the way here, there are a lot of people that are hungry and begging for money. Tomb of Rafiqa, wife of Ishaq. We can see the cave. It is the burial place for the Prophet Ibrahim and Sarah and Ishaq and Yaqub and Rafiqa and Laika. It is actually uh, 16 meters below. 16 meters below. And people believe that this is the first uh, cemetery in the mosque. So the structure that you can see around the cave it was built in. Uh, Roman period and Byzantine and then Muslim. So you can see the structure and you can see the cave. It's 16 meters below. 16 meters below the cave. And the Salahuddin, Manba Salahuddin. There's like a little bit of light. Mm. There's some light over there. Prophet Ibrahim, he traveled from home 
to Palestine. During his journey to Palestine, his wife Sarah, she died. And at that time, he was looking for a small cemetery to bury her. At that moment, he bought this cave from a king person, his name is Hephron and Hathi. He bought it from him 400 shekels. Later on, in the beginning of Roman period, King Herodos, he is the first one who built a wall around of the cave due to protect the place and make also historical place. But this wall was destroyed by Persian, we call them in Arabic, force. And then it was rebuilt again in the beginning of Byzantine by Helena Queen. Allah Ta'ala Ala wa We cannot forget. And then in the beginning of Muslim century, we call it Bani Umayyah. Muslim generation, they built it as a masjid. And also that in Mamluk century, the shrines that you can see around the mosque were built and were constructed. And also the shrines of the other side, the same as well, it's empty. But what you should know, the real bodies of the prophets and their families in the cave, which is located around 16 meters below, under the background. And we can see the place. Yeah, in front of you, we show you. If you we have to stand. Yeah. <laughs> this is tomb of Ibrahim. And on the other side is the uh, Jewish uh, synagogue, but it's mosque. Also, we have one of the manager of the mosque. Uh, he is also happy to explain a little bit about <laughs> Also, we can uh, have any conversation at any time because Muslims are happy to uh, also explain the story about Baruch Kulshan. Also here, you can see that uh, some people believe it's remains of footprint of uh, Prophet uh, Muhammad and some people said remains of footprint of Prophet Ibrahim, but no one can confirm. And here is also a tomb of Ishaq and tomb of Rafiqah. Actually, a special place for Muslim. Muslim Imam, like a priest in the church, he is standing there once a week and he makes speech. We call it khutbah. And this place actually a strategic place for Imam in order to inform people about Islam and also about uh, how can you be a good Muslim, how can you learn about your religion. But opposite of it is al mihrab. It means Muslim direction. It goes to Mecca, and every single day Muslim have to pray five times during Al-Islam. And we shouldn't forget that in 1994, 25 of February, there was terrorist attack happened here in this area. While Muslim people were praying in this place, Baruch Goldstein entered to the masjid and shot people. He killed 30 people in the masjid. And more than 150 were injured. So the fight happened here. The fight was committed by American Jewish Israeli. And when Muslims were praying, the Ruf Goldstein came behind of them and he fascinated them. And after he shot them. So the consequence was 30 people were killed in this location or in this place. And also the mosque was divided. But also you should know Ibrahim Mosque is not also a holy place, it's also a historical place. Historical for all. And you can see that the names of the shooting. The names of the shooting is here. The names of the shooting. Oh, the shooting. Yes, the shooting. The bullets, here. Right. Oh my god. And also. What? Oh, they, 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 oh, they tried uh, to shoot the imam. Unfortunately, international community wasn't able to save this place. Now, this place on the list of the international heritage. But no one was able to protect this place. You know, right now when I'm talking to you, there is security cameras and also there is microphones. This is the old city, remember. But if you remember, the other side of the old city. Also, if you want to stop anywhere, please keep I think you guys can go there. And this is really good because you came to the right place, the old city. We built this wire net in order to protect Palestinians from Israeli violations because Israeli threw stones and rubbish oh, wow. and dirty water and acid water and sewage 
and bad things. If you remember the settlement, yeah. we have seen it from the mountain. Yeah. If you remember yeah. on the other side, yeah. we can oh, see the the watchtowers. Yeah. And also, oh. there's watchtowers here as well. Oh. And yeah. also, we can see the settlement in the middle of the old city. The settlement based above the Palestinian houses. So now you can see the settlement, it is located. So they just the built on top of exactly on top of them. And Israeli yeah. demolished many historical houses wow. and they forced families to leave and they build the new settlements in the middle of the city. So you can see the difference between the old one and the new one. This is old. Mm -hmm. All the stores and above of it a new, a new one. Yes. So Alhamdulillah now Muslim people started coming to the city despite life is not easy and people yeah. started having motivation like, and you know it's called kind of motivation so i hope you can uh, take videos and share the story and i hope you have uh, enjoyed i think our tour is finished right now here oh, yeah, yeah. at that time that you built uh, this uh, part of the city uh, that's why we call it mamluk uh, era we have here a press or a mill. Uh, this is from the Turkish time, Ottoman time. We're talking about uh, 400 years. Here they used to grind sesame seeds to produce tahina and sesame oil, and they used to move this stone by a camel. This is a photo of the camel from 1920. 100 years ago, shows how the camel used to walk around this press and grind. They used to cover the camel eyes while he's walking around in case he feel dizzy or fall down. Yeah. Uh, here, they used to produce the sesame oil. Mm -hmm. They used to put tahini, mix it with water with special ratio. A man used to stand inside with his naked feet to step on it. It's exactly like making grapes. The oil float on top, they collect the sesame oil. Then they take the rest of the mixture at the bottom, the hard stuff, is going to be like this. It's full of sesame oil. They used to put it in cloth bags like cushions or pillowcases, and they used to press it to get the rest of the oil out. And what left, we add sugar to that, and this kind of sweets here. Here, we use the oil for cooking, making sweets, and we use it as well as a kind of alternative treatment, especially for treating asthma, cough, they rub it on the chest, mm -hmm. so take a teaspoon. Very good cure for asthma. I even put it in little box for tourists because they're not allowed to hold my stick on the air. Yeah. We have an old oven. The oven was used as a glass factory. They used to blow glass here before. Then see something. By the way, this is a storage for the oil. They used to keep the sesame oil here. It's to store oil in there. Yeah. And here is the oven for making the glass at that time. They used to blow glass here. This is the oven for oh, work. Wow. You know, everyone is famous for blow glass. We have factories still working until now. They do all types. All the ceramic. Glass. Yeah, glass and ceramic. But this, we call it Phoenician. This, if you look to an old civilization here, they, we still make it until now. But uh, this mixed with the precious metal. There is silver, gold, and copper inside the glass. That will make it very special because they do it in Hebron and uh, this mixed with the precious metal. This time, also special because we send it to Gaza Strip to do the coloring by hand. After that, they bring it back to us to sell it in our shops. This kind of support for Gaza really to sell their product here. It's all gas. Oh, is it knafa? Yes. Oh. What is, what is it? It's knafa. Oh, fresh. Thank you. Thank you. Very sweet. One <laughs> One of them from the checkpoint, and the other one from here. So here it's for Muslim, Muslims, and here for Jewish. To reach to the uh, mosque. Okay, forgive me. We have. Hebron Central Market. Oh, Michelle, thank you very much. We appreciate your kindness. <laughs> Shukran.
شو رجعت من امبارح بين الناس؟ اه يا اسمع الجاج اه من امبارح انا يو لايك ذس تشيكن اور يو لايك ذس تشيكن؟ لا I would highly recommend Mr. Abu. He is the tour guide from Hebron Hope Center. He is extremely honest and can show you around all the places in Hebron. I would encourage everyone to visit Palestine and West Bank and contact Mr. Abu to show them around.